Uh, hello! Hi, alright! Welcome to the stream! Uh, we're just, we're just starting to get started. I know that sounds redundant, but I am all over the place today. Y but yes, welcome! And with my special guest here, Pete! Hi, Pete. Here I am! I'm ready to begin to begin. Yes, here Pete go again on his own. Uh, I'm excited to uh, go over and build some stuff with you today. We're doing uh, One Piece and 5e. Yes, yes. Um, so the current system of One Piece D20 that we're running in the campaign is based off of D&D 3.5e, which is different <laughs> from the slim down 5e. Uh, Pete, would you care to go over... I've never played 3.5e, have you? I have not. Um, I've, I've played some 4e. I, I know a reasonable amount about 3.5 that I've picked up, but more that's like big picture, and I think it would be a lot that you would intuit from having played One Piece D20 as well. That's that's fair. So it's my understanding that 3.5e is a lot more um, feet heavy, let's say. Than, um, yes. 5e. <laughs> um, that's I think putting it very mildly. <laughs> um, in 3.5, I'm. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, in 3.5, I think just about everything comes down to feats. Um, I mean, you have like your class, but it functions a lot like One Piece D20, where your class just gives you a bunch of feat choices rather than you just get these things for being in your class, like in Fifth Edition, um, which is a different style of play. Uh, I don't think it's a bad style to play personally i don't, I don't think so either i think um i think it's very customizable yeah but it also uh, lacks in simplicity and elegance i would say ab absolutely i think you've i think you've summarized it pretty well it lets you do in theory it lets you do exactly what you want but um in a system like that it's also when there's a lot of moving parts that have very fine, like very fine detail and balance, it's really easy to find the ones that destroy each other and make something that's completely busted. Or yeah. I think conversely, completely useless. Like it's really easy to make something that doesn't work as well. That's true. Uh, I've I've found in my experiences with One Piece that it's really easy to make a busted character if you pick the right feats. Like, uh, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, I feel like the One Piece D20 system that we're using right now is incredibly unbalanced. And, um... I, uh, <laughs> I haven't, like, spent, again, as much time with One Piece D20 as you have. Uh -huh. It definitely seems like there are balance issues <laughs> in One Piece D20, but... I think they're the, so yeah. like it's so complicated. I can't even begin to wrap my head around how one would fix this. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, one of them, the biggest gripe I have with it right now is the uh, the brawler class, and how they can get flurry of blows, so their the amount of their attack scale, but also like with level, but also their damage scales with level, <laughs> like. Uh, so it gets a little bit exponential over time. Yeah, because uh, once uh, once a brawler gets to like uh, say say level twenty, they have like a three d eight on damage, and they get for every hit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for every hit. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm playing a brawler right now, and I would say that. <laughs> it actually feels a little bit weak at early levels. Um, like, I feel like I'm well, not putting out any damage because be I just hit for 1d6 and I don't have all the crazy weapons that some of the other people well, have. To be fair, you uh, you lack some of the feats that make it amazing. For instance, if I were going to min-max a brawler... Yeah, please, uh, teach me how. You're going to see this come out in the next level. Please don't. If I was going yeah, to min-max a brawler, I'd get them, I guess, rage... Um, I was actually looking at Rage. Which um, gives you strength boost and con boost. Uh, I'd look at Flurry of Blows and its tree. It has a I, tree. Oh, thanks for the post. There's an improved Flurry, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There's a greater. That was that was also on my list. Yeah, I, I have, figure. I, actually, I have Flurry now. Yeah. 
Hi. Oh, thanks for the host. All right. Um, well, thank you. And then uh, after you get those, after you're set with those, literally just stack critical focus. There is a feat in this version that increases your crit threat range. That's pretty whack. Yeah. Uh, that's a little. That's a little bit funky. Yeah. So uh, in my other game. Uh, two of the brawlers have that feat, and they've increased their threat range to like 17 to 20. So anywhere in that range, they'll get a crit, and that's. Um. So and they get they five crit. hits. So it's not like like they have. So, so statistically, they crit every combat round. Yes. Uh, which isn't actually true. It doesn't work out quite to that reliably. It almost. The, it feels charts, like it. But that's about right, yeah. yeah. They crit about once around, um, which I don't think is the intention of how crits are supposed to work. Yeah, I don't think the, the <laughs> either. But here we are. So uh, well, well, well. This I guess is maybe why you're you're growing more interest in One Piece in five e Yes, uh, segueing gently into the topic of this stream, I I um I've noticed some severe balance issues in the current edition. Of which I have absolutely no knowledge or way of rectifying. I'm not experienced enough in 3.5e. I don't know that system like the back of my hand. I just know it from what I've picked up from One Piece. I know 5e. It's good. Yeah, same. It's same. hard. It's hard to break 5e. I feel. Um, you can do it, uh, but if you're playing the game as intended uh, and I use that as intended a little bit loosely to mean, like, you can go into 5e, pick a race in a class, and just play it all the way through, and you're going to have fun because you're going to feel powerful, but it's not going to destroy anything. There's no class, maybe save Paladin, uh, that's, just <laughs> com that's just completely better than the other classes. Paladin, maybe. Paladin's in pretty strong. In particularly, I think the martial classes are very well designed in that particular regard. I, I, um, I think it's a little bit more complicated with spell scaling on the casters. But I agree. I agree. I feel like Paladin is like the tops for where you want to be. And of course, you can break it by min-maxing a Paladin. I think that's the easiest way to break 5e. Uh, you can always take a level in Hexblade and mm. uh, multi-class. You know that someone's beginning to min-max the first... <laughs> If one of your players saying is telling you that they plan on taking one level in Hexblade to be wary, uh, that's a Warlock subclass, uh, by the way. Yeah, uh, essentially, it, um... Hey, hey, you, take. Sorry. Actually, funny enough, it's the same thing that you were just talking about. It increases crit range. Yeah, yeah. Um, not quite as drastically, but I think there's so little of that in 5e that anything is starts to get a little bit whack. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like 5e is a lot simpler for people to learn. Because oh, when yeah. you were just learning One Piece, you were very confused. Am I right? Uh, yeah, there's a lot to take in. Um, I, as a player, am a person that really likes to like try and fully understand a system right off the get-go. Mm -hmm. uh, and... I just didn't really have the time to do that with One Piece because of how intricate it was. Like, it would take me a few characters to feel like I have a mastery of the system. Right, yeah. The s same. I'm running the system and I don't feel like I have a mastery of the system, so... There you go. Um, like, I remember I was so relieved because I built my character in Hun, your system you to grapple. Uh, because Hun, that was a thing I was interested in doing, is, room, is doing some wrestling moves and stuff. Uh, and I got the improved grapple feat, and I read the section on grappling, and it was like a full page yes. about grappling, and there was like six stages, and then oh. you were like, nah, just make one contested roll, and that's it, which is how 5e does it. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God that I don't have to go through this whole <laughs> system every time, because I'm going to be doing this all the time. Yeah, yeah. We figured, you know, for our games, we'd simplify a couple things. Especially, like, the uh, combat maneuvers, I guess you'd call them. Uh, are those, like, the power attack and stuff like that? Um, no, that's, like, the full... That, that's, like, the, um... It's, like, grapple, that's, like, overrun, that's, like, bull rush. Those kind of maneuvers. 
Okay. Yeah. The, oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Disarm, I think, is one. The advanced combat section. Yeah. That that section is a little rough. Maybe in a future stream I'll go over the system, actually, and try to read through it and explain my thoughts on it. But for now, we're going to go over to your document here. Pete has provided us a handy-dandy document with certain notes on how he would do One Piece and 5e. And yeah, um, it's it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough right now, um, in the sense that it's just like a it's just a very quick. Uh, it was just a very quick run through. I think all said and done, like I put a lot of my thoughts down on how this would run for, um, to make you know just to make excuses for myself in case it's not good, uh, in the course of maybe half an hour or forty five minutes. But I think like it's really surprisingly simple to adapt 5e really to anything, including One Piece. Yeah. All right. So let's go over this. Um, your first rule is that you cannot choose a feat. You cannot choose a feat when you take an AS ASAI increase, because I think you changed the way how feats are earned here. Yes. Um, so for starters, I think a, a good place to start would be, like, what is in the world of One Piece that isn't in 5e and that you would need to change in 5e that's to a, reflect One Piece? That's a good, um, that's a good place to start. Uh, what did you think needed to be there? Devil well, fruits, the, probably? Yeah, I think the obvious first one is the, the magic system, I guess. If you want to call it a magic system. It is. In One Piece, yeah, is, is the devil fruits. Um, so these, like superpowers that are innate and don't really like i don't know if tell me what your vibe is on this from the one piece series it doesn't seem like they're taxing to use it seems like everyone has a devil fruit can just completely wield it freely as much as they want yeah that that's the way it looks to me it doesn't seem like strenuous or anything i mean luffy just when luffy is, first well, ate his rubber yeah just is He's not tired by it. He just is. And for people like, um, what's the Mister Three? I think is a good example who like generates wax and creates wax out of his body mm -hmm. and manipulates it. Um, it seems to me in my heart like that should tire him out, and there should be a limit to how much wax he's able to make. But, but I don't think there is. I, I think he can do it forever. I mean, I mean, until he gets actually tired as like a person. I guess that's true as well. <laughs> <coughs> uh, but just physical exhaustion. But um, that's one of the governing things for how Devil Fruits work, is they're just broad strokes, resourceless abilities, and there isn't a lot like that in 5e. So that's a system that we need to put in place to start with. Right. Um, um. Uh, well, let's, let's keep going right here. Um... There's a new skill called science. Yeah, I, I tossed in a science skill. Mm -hmm. um, I thought there was, and I'd be interested to hear if you think that there's other things that need a skill. Um, the, the skills of 5e are broad, like perfectly broad. They uh, are wonderfully broad. I'm going to make yeah. a character sheet on this so we can... Oh, you've already made one. Okay. Yeah, so we can have a game. I, I, for precisely this purpose, to look at the skills. Um, yeah, and... so if we look here, there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, all of these seem kind of um, system independent, skill wise. Uh, yeah, I, I think that I can't think of an action that a player would want to take <coughs> that I couldn't judge by this chart. Except for something that wasn't intended for a uh, a high fantasy setting, which is what D and D is made for, obviously. Um, so that's why I put a science skill because I don't think that things like because there are cyborgs in D and D, and there are all sorts of there are the pacifistas and all manner of like things right, that right. I think fall in that school. And Arcana, I don't think quite cuts it for that. I I, I, I agree. I mind. agree. Um, uh, and I think there's a lot of characters that would want to be able to have proficiency in science. Right. I, th I agree. Um, yeah, there's not a, there's not really a skill I'd replace in here. So I guess it'd just be adding science on. 
Yeah, I think it's a pretty perfect list. The only other skill, and, and this is one, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this too. Mm. I spent a long time, like, just back and forth while I was thinking about this before I put some of my thoughts down, deliberating on a sailing skill. Oh, uh, if, sailing skill. Like... Mm. Currently, there is water vehicle proficiency baked into 5e. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much, like, nautical... You're on the ocean constantly, and having just, like, a... I'm good at ocean things. Like, even, like, under survival, just, like, ocean survival. Um, it seems... Maybe it's not right. Um, I, I don't know. I decided that it wasn't worth it, but that was one that I was thinking about a lot because that's the other thing that you do a lot of in One Piece. That's I think a here. sailing proficiency would work. I'd put navigation under something different. Um, um, well, navigator's tools. I actually think navigator's tools do cover navigation. They do, something. actually. Yeah, okay. So um, water vehicle proficiency covers sailing and navigator's tools covers navigation, which is really the two big concerns like, uh, yeah and that's where i ended up but I, I was on the fence on on in particularly the sailing one yeah. because it's so if core. It, if i had to replace any skill it would almost be religion but not because of the world government that would be like the world government knowledge skill to me or that might be history i don't know Wait, you were thinking which one on the knowledge? Um, uh, like a world knowledge, you're saying? Like, I feel like world knowledge would be history. World government would be history. Um, yeah. We absolutely. could replace religion with science, which sounds like a talk, but... <laughs> oh, oh, dear. <laughs> um, well, I, also, the thing about religion is, I guess... Yeah, I guess religion has absolutely no role in... One piece. I mean, I'm sure there could I, be a, a character that is religious, but, like, it doesn't play any significant role in the lore of One Piece. Right. So I figured we could get rid of religion and have that instead of, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> as science. And you know what's great about that? What's that? It falls in the same spot in the alphabetical order. Oh, uh, <laughs> it, it does! Actually, you can actually one-to-one -one it in. Uh, and I think that's a great idea. Okay, that's um, cool. Uh, we can write uh, it down if you want. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Toss it. Toss right. her on the uh, on the new skill science, and yeah. then it's replacing uh, religion. All right. Um... Science replaces religion. <laughs> You've heard it here first, folks. Oh my god. Uh... Um, all right says. Um... That's so funny. All right says. Think of it this way: hockey is magic, fruits are feats, as in the word, not the D and D term. And fruits are impressive things you can do at any given time. Hockey, you have to master if you want to be good at it. I don't Indeed. know how one would dis define such things in a D and D way, though. Um, I had put together some thoughts. Uh, I, I had a moment where I was like, "Oh, of course, this is how you do hockey," and I don't know if I ended up recording it. And now it's escaping me. So hopefully, over the course of this, and hopefully, I, I think I talked to you about it too, about how you would do hockey. Um, if you remember it here, also post it. Uh, but we'll maybe it will. Re I'll remember it as we're going through. Oh man, uh, I was hoping that I could edit the name of the religion um, thing, but uh, I don't think it could be done on the character sheet. It's denied to. Yeah, you'll have to make, I guess, a custom character sheet. And if we were using this character sheet, obviously you could just be like, "Religion is actually science," and that's call it a day. Yeah, but. that's probably what anyone would have to do. Uh, but it doesn't feel as good. I know what you mean. Yes, I like things clean and pretty, but oh well. All right, let's move on to your next little item, your your next little basic rule. Uh, uh, yeah, come on if I talk about this one. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, this was the flavoring section, um, and it's not so much a rule as just like an ideology to go through because this, you know, rule set here is more intended to. Um, it's more intended to, like, if I was going to run One Piece in 5e, it's how I would do it. Uh, and so this isn't something that you'd see written down in the rulebook, but I would just tell people this if I was going to run it. And that is, if something that you're building in the system would allow you to cast a spell or create a, a magical effect of some kind, you have to be able to justify how you're creating that effect in a more mundane way. 
Um, like so, like Nami's climb attack. Yeah, like like maybe Nami's climb attack. Maybe you have some kind of device that you've built. Um, maybe your like like Usopp's Usopp. pop pop screens. Uh, precisely, Usopp basically casts spells. He uh, do. He he throws up like a big giant wolf appears and it creates a shock wave out of its nose, which you could say is the thunder wave spell if you wanted. Uh, yeah. But you just have to be able to justify it in world. Uh, a simple example I put here is like any navigator, because navigators, Druidcraft would be a great spell for a navigator because it tells you what the weather's going to be. Oh, that is but, a great spell. But you can't have a person like, you can't like conjure a magical sun in your hand, which is what Druidcraft explicitly says. So just know to flavor your spells like, well, you don't conjure a magical sun. You just know instinctively what the weather's going to be because you've studied it so much. It just takes you, you know, in action like you're casting yeah. a spell to pick so, that up. Yeah, so this is generally an ide ideology. So you're saying players can take spells um, if they have justification for taking them. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, in, in kind of a mundane way. And there's a certain point, I think that breaks down at a point, intentionally so. I don't think there's anyone that would ever be able to justify taking the wish spell. Right, um, right. That just, so there is a limit there. I mean, if you had a wish fruit, maybe, but... <laughs> yeah, well, then that's a whole other story. Then we're getting into devil fruits, which we have a whole... We're gonna go through the whole devil fruit thing. Um, and actually, let me talk a little bit about that now for this next point. Okay. Um, because, so the first change there, which I guess probably looks suspicious if you know 5e which is you cannot choose a feat when you take an ability score increase. That's because to kind of, I, I guess in some ways, wean people off what they liked about um, the 3.5 One Piece, I guess to some degree. Uh, and also because I wanted non-Devil Fruit characters to scale the same as Devil Fruit characters do. Mm -hmm. uh, I was saying, <clears throat> pardon me. No, no, uh, don't worry. I I'm just a, I'm a coffee boy. Oh, you um, poor boy. I'm just a sad lad. I'm not <laughs> sad. That's not true at all. You're happy. That's, that is true. Um, Devil Fruits, if you don't have one, every time your proficiency bonus increases, which is about every five levels, you get to pick a feat for free, is what I've said in the system. So when you would basically normally be getting your ASI, actually a level before, but... Uh, or a level after, but roughly when you would get your ASI, you get a free feat. So, the, pretty good. Yeah, it's it was very good in the context of the way the system usually works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I did it that way because Devil Fruits are boons. Uh, you just get them and they make you better. That's and true. Sometimes. A thing, in theory. Theoretically speaking, you get them and they make you better. Uh, and the only way to do that would be to... Every devil fruit is going to have to be homebrewed. Right, um, of course. Because, I mean... I'm not going to have a ready-made list. You aren't going to have a ready-made list of all the class features of this particular devil fruit. Yeah, exactly. So it's just going to be... It's going to be fly by the seat of your pants. Um, devil fruits... Also, so just the nature of... This is another big point. 5e versus... Uh, One Piece D20, 5e is a much more gradual system. It is a much slower progression rate. Mm -hmm. um, so I set it up so that when you eat your Devil Fruit, and then every time your proficiency bonus increases, you get a Devil Fruit free. Um, and so I put this extra thing in there for people that aren't eating Devil Fruits, so they don't feel like they're just, because they didn't do it, they're not getting a cool thing. They're still getting better at the things that they do and what they're interested in. That's just not a superpower. It's more of like a mundane superpower. Like, you know, in like you how can Zoro fire. gets yeah. like a sh what the 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 six seven whatever he like turns nine. into a demon. I think he's nine is his yeah. number. Yeah. Um, he like but, turns uh, into a demon for briefly. Like that's definitely something you would take at a higher level. Yeah, well, because he has three heads, and each one has three swords. Yeah, so uh, nine. You're right. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of thing. And, like, maybe that's just Great Weapon Master, which in 5e is already a really good feat. Yeah, um, that's true. That's probably better than whatever <laughs> uh, a Devil Fruit feat would be. Um, 
that like it would just be a question of balancing it and trying to create devil fruit feats that are on par with 5e feats and that feel interesting to the fruit you know yeah of course i i think that's all really cool let's move on to your hi maddie let's move on to your race notes and um uh, yeah, these were pretty slapdash, as so, you can see. Yeah, I mean, we can probably take uh, critters from other content and slap them in here. Um, yeah, a lot of this is going to definitely assume that you know a good amount about 5e. All right. uh, so if you don't, then you might be a little lost on what these translations are. But the first one is humans are the first race. Uh, and the race from D&D 5e that I think you could use for the human is the human. Oh, gee, wow. <laughs> I actually, um, let me look here. I actually think that Sky Tribesmen are closer to elves than they are humans. Um, yeah, I don't really know what, in watching the show, they have the little wings. They do have little wings. But those wings don't actually have any, like, they can't fly. No, right? they can't fly with them, no. They're just kind of style. Yeah, and they they also <coughs> usually have some kind of antenna. But the sky, uh, the Skype tribesmen, uh, the the people that live on the Sky Islands, always reminded me of kind of elves. I don't know why, but I think that would be a good equivalent for them. In yeah. um, because there are three tribes: there's the Shandians, there's the Birkins, and then there's the Skypeans. And lo and behold, there are three elves. <laughs> so, I think um, it works out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're like as like one to one like i feel like the drow are maybe a little bit too niche for any of the yeah i agree on that one uh for any of the skylanders but like if i guess my thought on that is if someone wanted to play a sky tribesman and they wanted to play a human i'd be like fine but if someone wanted to play an elf as a sky tribesman i'd be like yeah it makes sense um so i i don't know i'm on the, I, i'm on the fence i could be convinced either way on on the sky tribesman because there are they are. They do just seem like humans to me, with little wings and and little antenna. I don't know. Some of them have mantra to start with, which is not something that humans have. That's Mon true. Uh, mantra and mantra being like the yeah the lesser observation hockey sort of right. I'd almost want to flavor it as like proficiency expertise or something, or sorry, um, perception expertise or something like that. Yeah, and, and you could um. You could get pretty, you could get pretty like nitty gritty into it, um, and I think the Sky Tribesmen. If you wanted to build them in Five E, you could make all of them like a proper race. Uh, if we're just trying to like, this is I think very much trying to take the easiest possible route. Right, 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 right. right. Um, I, I, but you could absolutely make them a whole race. Like, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think uh, that. You could probably... I think they're close as equivalent as elves, honestly. But that's me. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I could be convinced. In particularly, the wood elf does seem yeah, pretty, the, pretty on brand for me. The wood elf... I, I would even argue, like, the high elf a little, because you could argue that the some of the spells they start with are, like, dials. Yeah, the cantrip. Yeah, um, the yeah cantrip. If, and if a player... Again, that's another thing. Like, if a player came to me and was like, Oh well, I want this cantrip so I can say that um, I can say that the message spell is my tone dial. I'd be like, yeah, of course you can do that. Yeah, of course, um, because that's very cool. Yeah. Um, dials is another thing. Um, I mean, really, at the end of the day, dials are just magic items. Yeah, dials feel like cantrips to me most times, and like magic items best at the best. Yeah, um, and I could be convinced either way on those two. Like, if a player wanted to play as, like, a spellcaster and justify it all with dials, almost in an Ustapi style, yeah, I would be cool with that. But I, I think they work the best as magic items, so that way, it, because they're physical objects. Yeah, and they have too. charges, too, so. Yeah. That's interesting, too. Uh, charging a dial. There, there is kind of, like, a can't be used again until the next dawn sort of built into dials where you have to, like prep them that's kind of yeah. cool yeah so they are, really dials are magic items um and for anyone unfamiliar with dials from one piece if there's anyone here who doesn't know one piece that well they're just little seashells that hold that basically have magic powers pretty uh, much the simplest way of putting it i think 
Yep. Uh, there's like a tone dial that records things. Uh, that's probably a minor illusion, honestly, with sound. Yeah, you could, uh, you, you could, uh, trick some people with a tone dial for sure. And, uh, there's a flame dial, I believe. That, that could be like any of the fire spells, really. Oh, Fox, I remembered, um, I remembered the hockey thing. This is, you're gonna like this. This is just built into, uh, 5-8. Oh, oh, go. Um, you know how, uh, tons of stuff has resistance to damage from non-magical weapons? Mm hmm It's just hockey. It's just, when your, when your fists become magic, you've learned armament hockey. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just in the system. Like, and basically, I think it's great because that's about how much thought Oda put into it, too. <laughs> Well, um, what about uh, what about for martial classes like weapon users? Uh, wh about I guess you could always use the monk level and give the martial martial classes the same kind of feature at that level. Yeah, I, I think you could also just you, you could just give everyone a feature that's like your weapon attacks are considered magical for the purposes of overcoming yeah. resistance. You mean the ho hockey cool. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, to beat up Logias. Because Oda made Logia fruits, which were invincible. Yeah. And then he had to be like, oh shit, I forgot that I made this person out of literal light, and Luffy will never be able to punch them. How do I let Luffy punch them? <laughs> um, got so, it. Got got it figured out. This person's made of lightning. And like, it's the reason I say that he just retconned it, and it wasn't planned, because I've heard people say it was planned, but, like, he started everything off so methodically and trying to, like, Luffy had to figure out how to beat the tough-to-beat opponents. Yeah, like um, a Crocodile, Crocodile actually. Crocodile is a great example. NL, he just got lucky and was made of rubber against the lightning guy. And yeah. that kind of tracks. Like, it's a little weird that rubber should actually cause the lightning to coalesce. But I bought it. I bought into it. Yeah. Um, so... So it's kind of a it's kind of a weird mechanic, but the five E really allows for it in an easy yeah. way. Yeah, easy easy time, easy time. Let's let's keep going over the races. So a long yeah. arm is a long limbed bugbear. Uh no, it's just a person. Uh, and I was throwing in the following. Uh, it was just the whole race was you get a plus two to your dex, uh, plus one to two others of your pick. You get the long limbed feature from the bugbear, uh -huh. and then you get a, and then you get a skill because they're basically humans with um, a feat and a skill. And I'm saying that that feat is the bugbear long limb feature, which gives them ten foot reach on their arms. I um, see. So I'm basically treating long arms like a variant human, but with an extra plus one to something, because I felt like long limbed wasn't enough to justify a full feat's value. But a lot of feats have like plus one to a thing, and then a thing. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I gotcha. So that was, like, the mental calculation I did on how that translated from a variant human to 5e. So long arms, I basically are saying, are a variant human. I see, I see. And long legs are similar? Yep. Uh, I gave him plus ten movement, because that was basically the mobile feat, uh, but it wasn't the whole mobile feat, so I tacked on another plus one to any ability score of their choice to justify it, and then the skill. So I did basically the same thing with them. And okay. Dex felt right. What do you think about Dex? Dex feels right for them. Um, I say theoretically you could go with something else, but Dex feels right. It's either Dex or Strength. I might give Long Legs Strength just because um, they uh, they have to hold up more. They have more leg. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, I could. I could see it. I'm I'm down. I'll just change it. Why not? <laughs> Why heck like, not? Long legs are are not that well defined. I feel like so. Yeah. So long legs can be whatever. Yeah, we, we they're want. they're the leggy boys. <laughs> they're the leggy. Hey, we're the leggy boys. Um, we'll do the giant. The giant. This has a feature that I think is a a, t a stroke of brilliance right here. Okay. Um, plus two strength, plus two con. That tracks. I would assume you'd agree in, with me on that one. Yeah, that tracks. Powerful build, Natch. They're good at picking and carrying and moving. Yep, good, good. Uh, and this is brilliant. A brand new feat I invented called Giant Sized, which is you take up space as if you were a large creature. Uh, Does that apply <laughs> to, like, grapple checks, too? <clears throat> no, that's what's so great about it. 
You are not a large creature. You just are the size of a large creature. Cool. I lo- so 5e has a lot of very specific rules that interact with size. And the reason they've never made a large character race is because it would break a lot of things in 5e. But here, you just are big. But you don't gotta worry about all those rules that you being large would destroy. Namely, all your weapons would deal an extra damage dice of the type, and that would be absolutely broken. It would, it would. And then you get a skill. Yeah. I could see, like, a giant character grabbing the enlarge part of enlarge and reduce and, like, buffing their damage at some point. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Um, I could definitely picture, like, they go into, I and just call it, this is my giant rage. Yeah, <laughs> giant sure. rage or something. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, and if someone wanted to, like, interact with that aspect of it, of just being a big person, then, yeah, of course. Um, Cyborg, I thought was a Warforged. I think that's one to one. Yeah, more or less. I I don't feel like you could go... I mean, I think that's good. Uh, yep, yeah, there, there it is. I'm glad we're in agreement there. Uh, Mink, uh, Tabaxi was the best pick, but um, there are other animal races. Like, if you wanted to play an elephant mink, mink, you would pick the Loxodon. If you wanted to play a rabbit mink, maybe you'd play the bunny folk from D&D time. Oh. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of animals... And they yeah. all would make great mix. Yeah. So we'll just. Oh, yikes. We'll just put down other uh, animal races. If you wanted to play like a deer, I think you could probably go with like a minotaur, which is, I know, a little weird, but yeah. I think that would actually work with the horns and stuff. I think if um, you wanted to play like a lion or something, you could definitely go, well, tabaxi, but if you wanted to go like a strengthy based lion, you could even go lizard folk almost. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, I think that would actually work really well. Mm-hmm. Um, the big thing that minks have that's not respect reflected here is they have a, a power called electro mm, yeah uh which gives them I, I don't fully understand it's i don't can't tell if they're shocking people it is or it is they are shocking people they generate static electricity with their fur i almost uh, and i was just gonna say shock and grasp cantrip just give it to them shock and grasp cantrip yeah that sounds good yeah, so. it scales with level, so it'll always be useful no matter how high you get, even if you're not, like... Yeah, no matter what you do, it'll always be good. So I was thinking you can just give them that, and then yeah. maybe take something comparable away. What, like what? what would whatever, you... the, well, whatever the class is. So if it's the tabaxi, it wouldn't be this... You wouldn't take away their speed, which is their coolest thing. Um, but maybe you'd take away... Let me look at them real quick here. If it was the lizard folk, I'd probably take away their... Um their bone craft thing yeah exactly or in this case you know i might take away one of the skills from cat's talents uh either perception or stealth uh just to try and keep things rounded and even if you didn't do that it would still be pretty balanced like giving someone shocking grasp ain't gonna ruin a game (laughs) right right like Um... that's an that's an issue of balance like if you're trying to run it truly like make this perfect but i don't know if that's that wasn't well, my goal in deciding this. I don't no, know if that we're, would we're be just more we're just trying to get like a quick idea of how we do it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next up are the mermaid and fishman. The trait. I think that's a one to one. I don't know. I feel like I'd give fishman something, and then I'd give mermaids something else to take away their land speed. Um, you don't want mermaids to be able to walk on land. I thought the older mermaids could walk on land. Only, only the girls. Mermans yeah. cannot. That's true. Um, so we... oh, I forget that there's. I forget that those are a distinction of. You can be a mermaid or a merman or a fishman or a fishwoman. Yeah. I always just think it's fishmen and mermaids, uh, but because those are most of the characters that are seen in the show. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, perhaps sea elf. I could see a sea elf. Instead of the, uh, instead of the mermaid. We'll, well, we'll have to see, though. Um, 
Mermaids after 30 have a land speed that's comparable to humans, but mermaids under 30 don't. So I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I might give mermaids something like a extra, extra swim speed just to compensate for that in case a player chooses to not play an old mermaid. Yeah. Well, also, I almost would like want to. Maybe this is just me as a DM. I would almost want to like discourage players from playing mermaids, just because it like adds such a layer of complication to the game that I feel like it's like it's a fun kind of gimmick. But I feel like that would get old over time to always have to be. I, I don't know how. Like, have you ever seen someone play a mermaid and it been cool and like worked well? I mean, not yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, it just seems hard to me. So I'd almost want to ban the mermaid, frankly. Because mm. uh, as much as it's a nautical campaign, really it's a campaign about going and doing adventures on islands. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, hmm. I guess we'd have to think a little more about how we'd handle the legless thing. Yeah, but that's my also my preference as a DM. And if it was in this, you could still write it into the system and just say, like, and I think you're right. I think a sea elf with extra swim and no land would work or if you're gonna put them on the land give them a like a five foot land yeah you know? i i wouldn't give them no land speed i'd give them maybe like a five foot or ten foot land even speed. ten even ten you could probably do because uh, because you know you can, you can still flop around right yeah so i think mermaids would have options and i think like you could have like equipment like wheelchairs or something to get you up to a normal land speed But, um, uh, yeah, well, hopefully you have a cyborg in your party yeah. or a scientist of some kind that can design you robot legs for when you're on the land. Yeah, or, or something like that. And that's totally, totally within the realm of One Piece. But, it's um, in the realm of One Piece, certainly. I mean, it's not a thing that you'd, like, design for necessarily, but that was, like, if someone really wanted to play a mermaid, uh, I would probably insist on getting them a land speed somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, if not day one by day like by like session four you know <laughs> yeah lands we, 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 we gotta get him to walk around yeah or roll around at the speed of sound no place to go got to follow my uh tontata <laughs> yeah let's move on to tontata these are the um, dwarfs right yeah the little inch tall people them's the them's the dwarfs uh plus two strength plus two dex they're quick and strong and nimble um small size but i kept them at 30 foot speed because they're so fast in they the are show. Very, they are very fast you, you haven't met tantata right? i have you not know? yet but i do know that they're strong and fast they're strong and fast um and i gave them halfling nimbleness they can dart through people and i gave them brave because that's kind of how they are and i gave them some extra stuff because I also gave them disadvantage on insight checks, which is probably the defining thing that Tontata have, is they are unbelievably gullible. <laughs> <clears throat> um, which I love about the Tontata, personally. <laughs> um, and normally I wouldn't want to put something like that on a race, but since it's like a... Since you're playing in a setting, mm -hmm. uh, like in 5e, I would never put that on a race because I don't want people to feel pigeonholed into playing a character a certain way. Right. But if you're playing a Tontata, then the gullibility is an absolute delight. I love it in the show. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, I hope I enjoy it when I get there. I'm sure uh, I will. I will. Uh, no, I won't even bother. I'm going to stop. I won't say anything. Uh classes want to talk about classes yeah i think classes are fun um these are the classes that i said were all the classes and it's a very short list and those are a very short list you can play as barbarian you can play as a fighter that's not the purple dragon knight because it's so setting dependent or an eldritch knight you can play as a monk of any kind or you can play as a rogush uh but not the magic rogue mm -hmm. because that's... magic is not a thing in one piece yeah. Except for then, Devil Fruits. Um, that's it. I thought that that was all you needed. Hmm. Um, Alex had said at one point uh, that he thought you could just put Bard in as as is. Yeah, I think you could put Bard in as is. 
I've seen I... Brooke do some crazy shit. But I feel like Brooke's crazy shit isn't as, like... Wild as <laughs> what the bard can do on the daily. The bar, late game spells. Like, there's a point where I think that breaks down. I think the bard works great up until, like, even 7th level. Mm -hmm. I think you could justify it. But some of the stuff that you get for spells at that point really starts to leave the realm for me personally of what is possible in, in that's, one piece. That's true. I uh, like uh, Otto's Irresistible Dance. I feel like that would be a good good yeah, spell that is, bard. that is really good. Um, I feel like if bards had a limited spell list, a more limited spell list, like you switcheroo things out that are not within the realm of one piece and um, put yeah, stuff in. Yeah, you could probably justify that. Yeah. Um, I, but but there's also things like animate objects or you know like mass cure wounds and planar binding and these are things that are like that you can't flavor around but if you were like really chopping down the spell list of stuff that seemed like it made sense um yeah maybe um but like for example a thing that just don't make no sense that is even a lower level spell polymorph yeah it, um, it, it make no sense. That's just that, a Zoan that fruit. Make, that don't make no sense. Uh, yeah, that is what it is. It's just a Zoan fruit. A really good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all of them. But, like, hypnotic pattern? Hells yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Enemies abound? That makes a ton of sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, just, well, Dispel magic wouldn't ratter. Fear, for sure. For sure. Um, major image, not so much. Um, uh, you could probably do it with, like, an arty bard. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I could see it with uh, an arty bard. Uh, tons, how do you feel about... You just know a lot of languages. Yeah. How do you feel about uh, our, uh, inspiration, asks All Right. I feel like inspiration uh, is very okay to do. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Bardic inspiration is, I think, totally fine. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think it's totally fine. I don't think you even need to think about it. Yeah. Um, other classes that I think you could probably allow um, that I didn't put on here because they were caster classes. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're going to start talking about modifying spell lists and making things a little bit better, yeah. um, I think you could do the ranger. Yeah, you could You could definitely do a ranger with a modified um, spell list. The paladin's a little bit funkier. Uh... How would how would I love paladins? I could see a paladin, like marines are paladins to me. You think that marines, like in terms of flavor or in terms of play style? I think in terms of flavor, they're very paladin. -y. Yeah, I can kind of see that for sure. Did a lot. Yeah, that yeah. Makes sense. I think you'd have to take away... I mean, I think you could justify Lay on Hands as, like, some kind of combat first aid. Yeah, you could say that. Um, the Divine Smite is a little rough. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, you I could... can picture it, but, like, you, for one thing, you could not take Divine Smite away from a Paladin you without can't. destroying the class, because that defines the class. I think um, it, it just... It's not a Smite. It has to be, like has to be like a, a super strong hit or something. Kind of like I was saying divine smite could be hockey. It could, but you get it so early. Um it's it's true. You get it so early. Um yeah, You know, I it could know. be Probably like not. like Rokushiki actually. She gone? Uh Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, but then is it a marine class? Because I feel like you don't want to put in a class that's like, this is the class you play if you're a marine. Yeah, uh, yeah. But kind of you could have like a Shigon alike um, ability. Yeah, you could do all, all the Rokushiki feats would be fun to put in. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to. And, but like some of this stuff, like I feel like some of the stuff in... 5e as opposed to the one piece d20 and this is going to be a big shift i think 5e is a lot about finding how to make what you already have work mm -hmm. um like your infinite gepo on your monk is just 
you, you get wall run. And so if I want to go that direction, I just play a monk and then eventually learn to run up walls and be like, I'm doing my geppo. <laughs> uh, if that was, the, if I wanted to be like the Rokushiki master from uh, Zenil saying it was the Kuja start with hockey. Um, yeah, that's a thing to, to consider. I didn't actually include Kuja on the race list. I think I just forgot them. They're kind of um, just humans, though. But they are kind of just humans, but they know how to do hockey. Uh, and I am almost inclined... Like, the thing about some of the later races that you meet is they are inherently more powerful because they're scaled to Luffy, if they that are. makes sense. They so are. Like, when Luffy went to the island, there could be powerful people. Like, the average citizen was still tough, and, like, it seemed like a challenge as he was there. So in some ways, like, starting as a Kuja doesn't feel quite right to me in, I feel in the like you, scheme of things. I feel like you could do it as a human subclass. Um, so, so I feel like if I wanted to... If, like, I don't have a problem with someone being from the Kuja Island, but, like, having that hockey at the beginning yeah. seems a little a little strong to me. It, it is a bit excessive, yeah. I love the snake feature from One Piece D20. I love that they start with a snake. I love that too. <laughs> That's really good. They, they're, they're actually built to be rangers, if we're going to be real. That's true. Um, that works really well. Um, I, I want to so, make Paladin work, and I feel like you can. You could... Well, let me say this. There is nothing you couldn't make work. That's true. Um, these are the ones that I would really think, like... In particularly these four, those just work. Like, those those no work change. almost out of the box, but you, for any spellcasting class, you have to start tweaking. Um, and I would rather... Like, my thoughts on if you want to do the things that the spellcasting classes do, and Ranger almost is so little tweaking that maybe it's fine as it is, and Bard is, is closer, but you have to do more work um, mm -hmm. on, the, on the spells... I don't know. It's 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 tight. It's it's close. Yeah, I, I do agree with you that these guys are pretty much all good. I might argue with you on some barb subclasses, but um, what are you worried about? Like, well, ancestral guardians for one <laughs> has flavors of ghosts. Um, I can almost see it in One Piece. I could see that being somebody's thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I get where you're coming from. I, mm. I think you could. Alright, so spellcasting classes could be the fruit users if you want to call the fruits magic. But I don't think that works, because... Luffy's definitely a monk in this system, I feel. Yeah, you'd play Luffy as a monk. And the thing about... That was actually something that I was thinking a lot, too, is giving people caster levels when they get fruits. Mm -hmm. um, but... Fruits, the way that you want them to work in One Piece, people kind of... <clears throat> you... D <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, no worries. Um, I feel like the fruit doesn't come to you. You go to the fruit. Uh, by which I mean... People make their fruits work with what they already have. They don't just get the fruit and start doing stuff. They yeah. keep doing the things that they were already doing. But now they have extra the powers. fruit, like, amplifying it. Right. Because I agree. You don't want to get a fruit late as, like, you know, a late game fighter all of a sudden gets a fruit and they can, you know, if it was like you get a level in Wizard, well, I'm already level 20th fighter. None of this is going to matter to me because I have a thing. But, like, maybe your power was doing, like, making candles is a dumb one, but I'll just use that because it's the one that I thought of. You're like, well, I can make a candle now, but why would I ever take my turn making a candle when I could instead hit someone five times? Um, but in One Piece, what you're going to do instead is be like, well, my candle power lets the wax coat my arms and make my arms extra powerful. Yeah, or something like that. Or whatever it ends up <laughs> Or being. the wax coats my body and it increases my armor class or something. I don't know. Yeah, I make armor out of candle wax, which doesn't seem very like good armor. I think he actually does that in the show. Yeah, he does. Oh. And it's actually really good. <laughs> uh, but the point being that 
I feel like it's too simple because devil fruits have to be adapted to the character and what they're already doing because you don't want a devil fruit to just feel like a waste of time. Even though, like, technically that's possible, let's be real, like, there's no person that's going to get a devil fruit mm -hmm. and then even if, like, what's the worst devil fruit you can think of right now, Fox, to put you on the spot? Uh, one that makes you stinky. Um, there's anyone who gets the stink stink fruit is still going to put all of their heart into figuring out how their character would use that stink stink fruit and find cool things to do with it. And so you don't want to make one that would just like completely push them out of, of being able to do that because it has a predetermined power. Like you just, you get a class level and you are now like a wizard or something like that. You know? Yeah, I, I agree. That's my bottom line. Yeah, yeah. Devil Start fruit should rant. adapt or people should adapt to their fruit and incorporate it into what they're already doing not necessarily go launch off on a different path thing into... because of the right right yeah. um i don't feel like warlocks doable at all and i don't feel like wizards doable at all um yeah i don't think sorcerer either sorcerer yeah. is the most devil fruity class yeah in a lot of ways but but even then uh uh yeah. can't see cleric most times either yep cleric i don't think works um and i could the... i could maybe see cleric as like a doctor class um but like why would you be a whole doctor class when you could just have some like medicine proficiency you're right yeah so yeah i think the only other one um that I might pull in as Paladin. Um, yeah, maybe Paladin. Also, I mean, if we're gonna say, uh, if we're gonna say Bard, I think I'm modified. Uh, I guess the problem is the wild shape. I was gonna say Druid, but they get to turn into animals. Which yeah, is they're of... they're heavy casters. Let's be real. Um, Druids are heavy casters. I'm not sure. I, I feel well, I like if you do Circle of. Too, but... Yeah. Okay. What about Druid Circle of Land? Well, it's, everyone gets wild shape. That's the only thing that mm. makes druid not work for me is just the wild shape. Because other than that, I think you could do the same thing that you would do to bard, do a druid, because mm. all of the spells are in a nature you vibe, and like could... it's you're justified that sort of thing. Can what about um what about taking away wild shape and replacing it with something else? I think you could maybe make that work but now you're getting into some heavy territory okay like not needing to like there's no reason to do that when there's enough good playable stuff i think without it yeah because ranger is like the nature similar yeah you can do a lot of what you could do i would class well. usopp as a ranger yeah luffy as a monk yep zoro's a fighter right yep um nami's a rogue uh, Bard maybe too. Yeah, maybe Bard. If we're, if we're gonna go that direction, uh, she also might be a stands, ranger. She also might be a ranger, um, but I'm not sure. Yeah, as it stands, I think there's a few choices there. Um, what about Robin's Sanji? Robin's a rogue. <laughs> yeah. What about Sanji uh, for you? Fighter or monk? But yeah, I, I could go either way on that one. But probably <laughs> fighter for me. But... Probably fighter. Um, Frankie. Uh, ranger or. Barb, barbarian. Uh, yeah. Uh, I could also see Luffy justified as a barbarian too. Honestly, I could too. <laughs> Funnily enough. <laughs> Funnily enough. Uh, Brooks, Brooks, definitely a Dex fighter for me. Uh, I read Bard. <laughs> oh yeah. Swords Bard. Yeah, if you're we're right. Doing Bard, then that then that feels correct to me. But yes, you're right. I, I I'm dumb. I would have put Brook Brook as a Dex battlemaster. I would have agreed with you 100. percent Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, what about he, uh? Who else? Is there? We get everybody. Uh, Jean Bay is also a monk. Uh, Jean Bay is a monk. Yep. Jean Bay is definitely a monk. He's <laughs> extremely. He's he's one hundred percent a monk. He's more, he's more of a monk than monks are. Yeah, he's more of a monk than Luffy's a monk. He literally his move is called Fishman Karate. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's he's very okay. R Robin's a rogue. Um, Chopper. Yeah, on, we miss Chopper. Oh, Chopper is a barbarian. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Um, because of his devil fruit, he is a barbarian. Yeah, I think um, his uh, devil fruit definitely influenced his fighting style because he got it so early. 
Yeah. In his uh, life. And every class, um, like, I feel like, again, like, One Piece, they didn't build the characters around a system. So, like, Chopper doesn't really work in this system as he stands because there's no reason that untransformed Chopper would be able to fight even at all. So it's just like, you don't have your class levels unless you're using your devil fruit would be almost how he would have to work. Almost. Um, I feel like Chopper's more a monster. Sorry. No, I meant <laughs> he, he'd he have a monster stat block versus being an actual playable guy. Those big eyes are the eyes of the devil. <laughs> Chopper is a real monster. Um, but yeah, Barb, also he's a monk because he has monk point now. I don't know what it is. I can't remember. Uh, he has a. Uh, you see that on Fishman, right? I didn't spoil anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Kung the Fu, combo Kung of Fu. arm and leg point, right? Yeah, Kung Fu point. Kung Fu point. Yeah, he 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 multiclassed into monk. I think he was yeah. maybe always a monk though. But like, he seems like if you wanted that to be your end game vision, you would have to build that in such a way. And like, the way I would do that would be like. You can rumble, and then you gain a number of class levels while you're in that form. <laughs> like, like yeah. today I'm a monk, tomorrow I'm a barbarian. You'd have to get so wild to make some of these characters work really the way that they're meant to. But So, um, Alright says, No, I'd say Chopper made his fruit his own more than anyone else because of the rumble ball. Yeah, that's true. Chopper... Chopper did really choose what his power was going to be in a lot of ways. Uh, for sure, for sure. Gene would like to talk talk to Chopper for sure about <laughs> all the shit that he learned about messing with his own devil fruit. Yeah. Um, Ivalon says I would probably rewrite the classes because eighty percent of them are for medieval times and not for pirate times. But I think um, I kind of disagree. Yeah, I do too. Um, you could. I I'm not saying that like. I mean, you, you could rewrite the class. flavor components, I guess. Um, but the mechanics of 5e are, are rock solid, and I just don't see the reason to do a lot of work when just a new coat of paint will suffice. Um, and, and there's places where it doesn't translate, and you got to kind of pick up some of the pieces, but I, I'm a firm believer mm -hmm. in just the general principle of you know use everything you can don't don't duplicate work unless you have to and yeah i mean that was very much the goal of this this remake here yeah these 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 classes and spells are like small little projects i don't think bard would take long at all to do bard uh you think it would be pretty easy yeah um you're, you're selling me on bard more and more yeah uh, i think bard sure. would be pretty easy you would just give them a modified spell list look at the subclasses take out the ones that are you just not not do not real doable, and there you go. Um, yeah, um, you're 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 convincing me, convincing me more on Bard uh, with each passing moment. <laughs> uh, um, I feel like well, Ranger would be similar. Beastmaster Ranger is like what the um what one of Buggy's crew is with the the big lion Richie. Um, which guy? Uh, he's uh oh, he's the lion oh, tamer. Beast Beastmaster. Oh yeah, Beastmaster works. Anyone can have a fish <laughs> we could have a fish or like the giant moo cow sea king that they tamed yeah that could be your beast and just call it a like what would it it would actually be like a marlin or something yeah uh but that would be again, awesome these, these are things i would i would reflavor and stuff yeah i mean you could you could use a lot of that um i think base ranger works okay uh favored enemy would be weird for me um, I feel like you'd have to. Favorite, favorite enemy is a bad feature, uh, as it stands. Like yeah, I think you'd have to cut up favorite enemy into like alliances, like human factions, like world government, or pirates, or revolutionaries. Uh, yeah, I was actually just gonna say, or plot twist, Zoro's a ranger with favorite enemy pirate. You know, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, no, he's obviously a fighter. But. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I kind of... I, I think it's... The thing is, I think it's fine. Like, it's not... <laughs> it's just a bad feature. For yeah, me, it was... Not, Ranger's not a good class in base 5e, to me at least. Um, favorite enemy's got a lot of issues. 
in 5e more than it does like with interacting with one piece yeah i think ranger's just problematic as a class uh, in 5e i was saying zoro does d triple dual or triple wield to kind of a ranger yeah i mean kind of you could make it work sort of yeah i'd, I'd um, pick if, if i was zoro i'd pick up like two weapon fighting on a fighter um or like i guess we could call it multi-weapon fighting but I might even go barbarian. I might even go frenzy barbarian on Zoro, and then mm, I could see it. And yeah, and then him. that way you're doing exactly three attacks every turn, mm. uh, and they're all very good attacks. Oh, I see. That is good. <laughs> all right, saying the one thousand pound cannon, uh, and don't forget, we also need to make sure we have a way to get Usopp's one thousand pound hammer. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> uh. But, uh, yeah, the, the thousand pound cannon. I mean, that would be like a special thing that we'd have to put in. Um, but that'd be a cool thing if someone wanted to do it. Uh, want to do the backgrounds here? Yeah, I, I, I was just about to suggest. Let's do it! Um, wow, it you pretty much the sailor background and its variant was built for this. Yeah. Marine, just the sailor background. Pirate, the sailor background with the pirate variant. It's already in the... It, yeah, it's, it's a base in. game. Uh, so the navigator, I threw in water vehicle proficiency, navigator's tools, cartographer's tools, perception and survival, and the background feature was you can memorize how to get to places that you've been. You sounds know, sounds like, good. I think that's backgrounds have like a set number of things they give, right? Uh, yeah, I gave one more tool. Does it say cartographers, or did I say cartographers' tools? Yeah. Uh, what a fool I've been. <laughs> you um, got me. I, I wouldn't consider water vehicle proficiency a tool. Um, well, it's just in that, like, class, though. I, like, mm. of the non-skill the non proficiencies. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. Uh, survival uh, for, like, a tracking sort of thing? Does it uh, and things like tying ropes on a ship? I figured would be survival and like. That's fair. You uh, know how to fish and like, you know the sea. What are the proficiencies granted by the sailor background? Do we know off the top of our heads? Athletics and perception. Okay, they don't have survival, even though they do get water vehicle proficiency. Do they get like a tool or do they get one of the games? Uh, I think they get one of the games. Okay. That feels right to me, too, because it's like, for example, Luffy is the quintessential pirate background, right? Yeah. Um, Luffy don't know nothing about sailing. He's just he's just a sailor. Like, he can be on the boat, uh, but he doesn't know how to, like, navigate and stuff. So that's why I didn't want to give them those kind of details. That's fair. Also, the backgrounds in 5e are pretty limited on the whole. Yeah, fair enough. If you give one extra skill, I feel like that's okay, I guess. One or two. Uh, Matty Mark says <laughs> tying knots are in face. Uh, <laughs> oh, Matthias Morgs, you have fested me this day. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, oh, Matty Morgs is saying salt marsh has four backgrounds for a watery setting and tips on how to make a salt marsh hermit or whatever. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. We, um, we could probably look at that. You want to make a note somewhere in the here? Yeah, well, actually, I'll put that next to. Oh, where did I put it? Uh, or maybe it was just in my mind, and, and I think Alex left a note down here because he was looking at this before. Oh, um, oh, yeah, for sailing. I know there's a system we would use. We just need to put it here. Um, <clears throat> there, we would use the Salt Marsh sailing system because it's awesome. There's a really good ship to ship combat, and all of like the sailing stuff from Salt Marsh, Ghost of Salt Marsh, you would just toss that right on into this is what we would use for sailing. All right, let's, we got a backgrounds from salt marsh suggestion, so I'll put that down. Yeah, check those out. Some of those might work really well here. Yeah. I haven't I, I don't know. I, we can probably look it up, but uh, let's let's keep, finish going through the backgrounds. Shipwright's got water vehicle proficiency, carpenter tools for the wood, and the weaver's tools for the sails. Yep, that's what I thought you needed. Athletics um, and science. I, I could definitely see science. Uh, yeah, Natch. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the, <clears throat> the, the feature. background feature, 
just you know how to do like my background features here were really vague uh and they were just like you know how to do the basic things that you're expected to do i also put given time you can fix a minor issue with the ship and it's just assumed that you can always do that mm -hmm. like minor very minor repairs and you know how to get the tools to do repairs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I do think your historian sage is pretty much one-to-one -one. i love the historian as the sage because the obvious robin is the historian obviously right and i was just thinking robin as the sage and it worked so well for me down to like you got you like learn arcana and history i think are the two skills that you get um which is dead on and then it was um <clears throat> and and then it was a couple of languages which felt really cool and then lastly and the most maybe significant thing for me was the discovery feature you've learned a, a terrible fact about the world that has basically prompted your adventure into the world I thought it's that literally... was I thought that was like the hermit. Oh shit. <laughs> <clears throat> now, what are we looking at here? What are we looking at here, Ive? Is this salt marsh or this is unearthed arcana? Or unearthed arcana is not salt marsh, is it? But it does have a lot of fun little mechanics that could potentially be brought in. Um, yeah, that was a really good, um, that was a really good Unarched Arcana, uh, that of Ships and Sea. Uh, and yeah, I was saying, I think they took some stuff from this for the Saltmarsh one. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, some of it's, uh, pretty one-to-one -one on that. Yep, and, uh, he also did, I have also provided Waterborne Adventures, which contains some races. Looks uh, like this one. I ha this one I haven't looked at actually. Um, there's a Minotaur. Ooh, the min the Minotaur. Well, the, the Minotaurs min are Minotaurs are uh, official published now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, probably not this, but there oh, is a Maddie fighting. Was saying Sage can locate knowledge by knowing people or locations it doesn't know itself. Yeah, I mean that works really well too. Yeah, I I could see you porting in Hermit or you could port in Sage. Um, Trigecko, maybe a royalty background could be a thing, given that kingdoms are a big part of the One Piece world. Yeah, I mean, yeah, noble. for sure. Uh, I actually picked these backgrounds as all of the backgrounds, because I think that was just what the backgrounds were in the other system. So I just wanted to give them Equivalence. comparisons. But if someone wanted to play a noble, I'd be like, yeah, of course. Um, there's so many, there's so many important nobles in the One Piece world. There's a fighting st style mariner here, and roguish archetype swashbuckler. Uh, oh, the swashbuckler. That's a, that's a th classic. That's been around for a while. Yeah, I think that's official content now, right? Yeah, that. I mean, that came out in... I think that's a bard subclass, though, now, isn't it? Um, no, it is a uh, rogue subclass. Okay. Uh, well, this is the mariner fighting style. And uh, it is, as long as you're not wearing heavy armor or using a shield... You have a swimming speed and a climbing speed equal to your normal speed, and you gain a plus one to AC. So that's pretty good. That means you could wear a uh, half plate. And that does seem really good. Yeah, that seems a little strong, actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I guess that's why this one's in our on our Arcana. But, um. Yeah. Well, uh, let's let's head back to um, this. Yeah, let's keep looking at some of these backgrounds. Um, the doctor I threw together really quick mm -hmm. uh, and it's basically I think it was basically ac acolyte a um, couple of languages medicine proficiency insight proficiency uh, for starting equipment I figured just give them a healer's kit yeah uh, the healer's kits do you ever use a healer's kit docs I usually use um herbalism kits like healer's kits okay um, there's a cool thing that it's just baked into the rules and the healer's kit mechanically mm -hmm. uh, what what it do is you just get to when you make a stabilize check you can expend a, one of the healer's kit's charges and just get it for free it's like a it's almost a feature on the item and they're cheap but no one ever buys them in 5e um, yeah but I, I just thought they were kind of cool 
They are kind of cool. So I thought the doctor should get one for, for the sure. whiskey to start with. And musician um, gets the entertainer background. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course. Uh, it was yeah. a nice broke performer, entertainer. Yeah. Well, honestly, you can use almost any of the heckin uh, one piece backgrounds. Or sorry, five E backgrounds for this. There's a yeah, few. Yeah, no background you couldn't use. Maybe acolyte's a little funky, but yeah, acolyte would be the only one that's really funky for me. But the rest of these, like, I, I see these and I'm like, yeah, this is what they are. But having the extra ones for Doctor Shipwright Navigator, that's oh, all and, great. Uh, and Chef. And um, Chef, I agree. I I talked in. You get cooks utensils. You get animal handling and survival. I thought animal handling was funny. Uh, and then the feature is you get easy forage on lander and sea. Nice. Is a rough way of saying what would be a much wordier thing. Like, while traveling on yeah, land, yeah. your check's made to successfully... Vo like, shut up. It's just you can get food. Yeah, you can get food. Uh, Ivalon says archaeologists might be fun, considering the setting and the lore. I feel like that's kind of covered by Sage, though. Yeah, I was thinking historian would would fall kind of cover that vibe, um, but uh, if there's like I guess if there's specific things that you can think of that like wouldn't be in there, yeah. The, and you can always talk to your DM about switching out a proficiency or whatever. Amen. <laughs> um, this is how I wanted to do guns. Um, I like it. I like it too. <laughs> you want to know why I like it? Because it's simple and you don't have to do it's anything. Exactly right. <laughs> uh, if you're gonna use a bow, just call it a gun. If you want it to be a bow, that's fine. <laughs> Guns don't even seem that good in the world of One Piece. Like someone with a, if you showed me two One Piece characters and one of them was holding a rifle and one of them was holding a bow, I would automatically assume the one with the bow was way tougher. <laughs> yeah. Same. Um, I don't know. That's my thoughts. There's. I also just put it. It functions the same way, but louder. It's assumed that the downside of the gun, which is to say, it makes a lot of noise when you fire it, is there. Yeah. Uh, with no additional upside, but whatever. It's way cooler for you to fire a gun. Yeah. I mean, sure. Uh, what's the small mechanic you like for guns, Ive? Because I'm in love with this. Because I, it means I don't have to do anything. <laughs> Oh, okay. He says that um, if you roll a nat 1, it has a chance to, like, jam or explode or misfire. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, specifically for the flintlock pistol feeling. I feel like the uh, the jamming ones are, like, crossbows and stuff with loading. The loading attribute. Um, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm following you. I'm yeah. following you. Uh, and yeah, I I like that rule too. I would get behind that 100%. Um, I, I think one of the cool things about guns, there's so many guns, at some point they're going to have their rifle and then want to get a better gun, and you're going to magic item them up a gun real quick uh, and basically just say that it's a magic item, but really you just like, this is a rifle, this is a plus one rifle, it's a sniper rifle, you know, and, and do it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the same way, like a fun progression this is just a D, D 5e i guess maybe this is just a dming trick that i like to use um and that is i love to give my parties when they start off uh if i'm running like a long-term campaign worse versions of all of their weapons oh that like, is fun yeah i start them off a lot of the times with like oh well you guys have minus one rusty weapons because you're from a small town and there's no reason to have a lot of defense here and everything from uh everything in like the guard barracks is awful so you have minus one weapons and that way when they earn like five gold pieces for helping a woman find a cat in session one and then they go and buy their sword they're like duh, 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 i have a real sword now this is amazing i i um, love it pete uh, so it, you could do absolutely. that with a flip luck like pistol yeah it's a great that's a great just gm trick that i recommend to anyone um Tangent. Want to talk about Devil Fruits? Yeah, let's talk about Devil Fruits. Let's That's... get real on Devil Fruits. This is probably where I actually I actually did some design. 
Um, let's let's get at it. Yeah. Uh, so the way that we're, I would intend them to work is you grab a free feat when you eat them. Yep. And then every time your proficiency bonus goes up, you get another feat on the free ski. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Fine. It scales with the other thing. Yeah, that's why I built those in parallel intentionally, so that way people would feel even. But just, like, do you think that's... It's definitely a much slower progression than... I think that... You're going to have to be less specific. Like, you know how in 3.5e, the One Piece D20 version that we're playing now, feats Mm. are very specific. I think the feat would have to be a bit broader to encapsulate yeah. levels of progression, like Oh yeah, for sure. I for, was picturing for something the, like Go ahead, go ahead. Let's let's use Luffy's fruit as an example. His first f- feat is that he can do all of the gum gum pistol and gum gum uh, axe and whatever. The you know, the basic stuff he was using in season one. And then I feel like when he learned how to use second gear, that was a second feat. Um, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I had in mind. Um, cool, cool, cool. And like, for example, Luffy's, like Luffy's first feat would be something like, you know, your reach increases to thirty feet, and you have, um, you have immunity to the non-magical bludgeoning damage. Um. And honestly, I think that sums about that about sums up Luffy. Yeah, I mean that that sums up Luffy <laughs> That's pretty much. Actually, Luffy's whole shit. So. Yeah, uh, and then second those gear. Those are big features. Yeah, and then like second gear almost feels like haste to me a little bit. Yeah, you, he kind of gets the haste. I almost said cantrip. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gone. Um, so but, big things. We're on the same page there. Yeah, big things. Second gear was a while in. Yes, I've but. Um, Luffy didn't get much stronger until much later, too. Um, likewise, uh, if you eat, uh, oh, so let me throw this, uh, at you. So first, let me hit you with the way I did the devil fruit curse. Hit me up. When you eat a devil fruit, you gain this feature. You have a swimming speed of zero feet, and no magical effect can give you a swimming speed. While submerged to at least your waist in standing water, you are unable to take actions. Attacks against you have advantage, and you have disadvantage on all saving throws. Um. I mean, you're basically incapacitated. Um. Yeah. You're basically unconscious for all intends and purposes mechanically yeah but but you're not i didn't make you actually incapacitated because like or or unconscious because in the world of one piece whenever people are drowning they're always like a devil fruit user falls in and they're still conscious but they're mm-hmm. just kind of like <laughs> is my impression of luffy when he's in water um what about um eh. The, uh, what's the word? The, like, the whole person effect. Um. It's kind of like that. Paralyze? Par- paralyzed? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, you could go instead of, um, well, but you can kind of do stuff. I didn't want to say you had no speed, because, um, when they're, like, using... For example, Cairo Seki, uh, if they have the uh, the handcuffs on, they can still move. They're just drained. Yeah, that's true. But um, but I guess I did cover that anyway with unable to take actions because a move action would be moving. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's similar. Uh, I the, feel I like the only extra thing is the disadvantage on saving throws. Yeah, I feel like that's fair. It's extreme, but it's fair. The only one, the only saving throw that I wouldn't give them disadvantage on is a death saving throw. On, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, I guess this reads that way, uh, but. Here it goes. Yeah, toss it, toss her in there. Yeah, because Trigeku, Trigeku prob- said, oops, yeah, that was there's one. one of those things. <laughs> Better start throwing death saving rolls. Uh, 
yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that's one of those things that if I was running this, I wouldn't have made, I wouldn't have done that to people. Because mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't the intended design, but if someone reading this, if yeah, they're it really might read that way. Curse, they might be like, oh, fuck. Uh, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Oh, great. I, I've done it more than... I did. I, I've, I've been doing it on stream all the time because I can't control my body mouth, so... I, I tried. I, I tried to keep it PG thirteen, so like not excessive. But I did shout "Forest of Dick" in one episode of One Piece, so I well, I burned my own bridges. <laughs> uh, such is such is life, I suppose. I had no intention of saying that. It just exploded out of my mouth. It was the second episode. Thanks. All right. <laughs> what about the lo- uh, Logia Eater? Um, when you eat the Logia fruit, you gain, you have immunity to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Seems about right. Yep. I thought that was a simple way of doing it. I do Um, think they have an elemental weakness. Most Logia do. Like, Crocodile was weak to water. But I feel like that would be on the specific fruit, and not as, like, a general thing that everyone gets. I, I might, like, put in a requirement that Logias have to have a weakness. Yeah, sure. All right. So, how would you word it? Um, that's what I was saying, though. Is I feel like I would word it in in the fruit itself. Yeah, I would. I would word it in the logia eater of the specific fruit. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, you know, you know what you could do. Actually, you could go. How do you feel about that? I like that. Ad- additionally, you gain vulnerability to the damage type of the GM's choice. Now, to, to a damage type. Yeah, to a damage type. Um, yeah, if I were to point out Crocodile's weakness in this system, I guess it would be like... F- uh, well, the thing is, is there isn't water damage. Mm-hmm. Um, in one piece which is what actually one of the most common weaknesses is for example like um the fire i guess it's not true that ace's fruit would be weak against water but it just seems like it would be yeah um what about um magical bludgeoning damage would be considered water damage for people with devil fruits um, yeah but then also like if someone with monk punches you you shouldn't be vulnerable to that that's, that's true. Magical blood damage that they do. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I that's that's hockey for good. them, though, and you should be vulnerable to hockey. I think this is something that you do behind the screen and you don't put on the character sheet. All right, that's fair. All right. Um, you know, you read the situation. Logi are hard. <laughs> yeah, all the devil fruits are. I mean, that's where the actual design in this is going to come in—is designing devil fruits for people that want them. Yeah. Um, uh, let's look at uh, let's look at some of the recommendations. Uh, we got a we got a recommendation to craft like maybe as a skill or as a proficiency, but I think that's covered by tools and the science skill particularly. Um, yeah, I mean crafting would just be the creation of magic items, and um, five E allows for that. You you can make that work in five E. Yeah. Um, it's actually not great in five E, but I don't know how hard the systems were in D twenty for that, uh, and how integral they they were, but. Uh, Trigeku asks, wait, if you're a giant who ate a devil fruit, does it change? Because waist height gets kind of up there when you're so big. Um. Wait, what was the question about the giant? Uh, basically, it was the waist high submerged to at least your waist in standing water. How would that work with giants? Um, Is, was that's the actually, the waist high, the reason I chose waist high was actually, I went on the One Piece wiki... And I was really interested in how that worked, and that was actually something very specific. Once the water gets up to their waist, it's about the point where they start to to break down. So um, that's that, so that's that's Oda, that's Oda himself that wrote that rule. All right. Uh, so so I, my answer is I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess giants would be waist high then. They just got a bigger waist. Yeah, they got a higher waist. 
It seems like it would be good to be a giant then. <laughs> if Oki, you were, if, you, if you're gonna use a devil fruit, but then the problem is also, um, you're the ocean is, is very deep, mm -hmm. uh, and if you're gonna be on a ship, <laughs> you're taking up a lot of space on that ship, and if you get pushed at all, you'll fall off. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's a balance there. For sure. I, everyone plays giant devil fruit users now. <laughs> uh, um, there's checks and balances. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's a really specific example. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Uh, I just don't know how to answer. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know how to handle that. Like I said, I took. I guess you could just say like. I mean, it's the vice versa things. for dwarves. If you have a dwarf devil fruit user, they're gonna. Their waist is tiny. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna drown in like an inch. <laughs> And I didn't picture, like, for example, if you're in waist-high water, I didn't picture you um, just drowning, <laughs> but just being, like, in full sort of uh, Luffy mode. Um, a great example of the waist-high rule. If you would like to see the waist-high rule in effect, um, please watch uh, Luffy in the hot spring with Boa. Uh, because he's just he's up to his waist and he's totally fine and I was like so that's how high it can go because I did this and I forgot that he couldn't be in water. <laughs> <laughs> it's I guarantee what happened. I bet you. Um, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, uh, other recommendations are a sailing thing and that's water vehicle proficiency, but also. Um, ships and boats from the Unearthed Arcana and Salt Marsh, which has apparently a really good boat system. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we could pull some backgrounds from Salt Marsh. Um, Alex yeah, suggested in the bard. Alex uh, suggested devil fruit lists. Yeah, yeah, I mean it'd be good to have some, a couple of. Uh, I mean, definitely, if I was going to run this, I would just write up a couple of sample devil fruits just to try it out. For um, sure, and I think having example devil fruits would be really helpful. One for each type. Uh, like, I have here, um, I had built my own One Piece in 5e on Roll20 a while ago, and this was just like a quick initial devil fruit, and I, I put together a wind logia, because mm -hmm. um, I thought that sounded righteous, and um, the, a quick write-up of a level one was... Your body becomes made of swirling air. You gain the following benefits. You gain a flying speed of 60 feet. You can cast the following spells. Gust at will. Gu or actually... Uh, yeah, okay, you can cast the following spells. Gust at will. Gust of wind at will. Zephyr strike, one per short rest. Chromatic orb. This casting of chromatic orb always deals slashing damage. One per short rest. Um, so... It was just like a, a rough sort of, this is kind of about what I expected the power level of a beginner devil fruit to do, and what kind of things you could do with it. That's um, fair. That's fair. Um, and a flying speed of 60 feet is literally nothing to laugh at. Like yeah. I figured you're literally made of wind, and you're cool. You're, so, yeah, you're cool. This would be an OP devil fruit, just by nature of the way devil fruits work. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, the wind logia would be like, that would be a new admiral, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... And the musician could also probably be bard. Yep. Yep. We already did that one, so we can actually take that out. Yeah, uh, Windalogia would be insane. Agreed, Alex. Yeah. All uh, right, and I think we, we've gone through all of your, your notes here. Yeah, um, so... So... In going through, did you... For, well, for one thing, originally when I pitched you One Piece in 5e, you were a little skeptical. Do you agree with me now? I think... It's a lot more doable now. I'd be up for trying this. And I may run a one-shot of this just to test it out. Somewhere um, down the line. Absolutely. And I may choose from our viewers here, if anyone is interested. Um, but yeah. <laughs> You're already in the game, Alex! Oh uh, boy. I mean, but but for real though, I also want to play it if we're going to do this. <laughs> like, I need to, if we're going to run this thing, <laughs> Of course, I it's it. yours. Um, honestly, I might also just run it at some point. That's um, fair too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to give it a shot. Um, 
did you think of any can you think of anything that was glaring that we did not talk about that to you that stood out like one piece d20 wouldn't work without this thing for me that made it really cool for me like from the old system yeah um not really most of it's encapsulated in the devil fruit stuff there's nothing i can really think of that isn't some way captured by 5e um that's what i thought as well um uh especially because you can custom like homebrew feats for people yeah yeah. like Uh, which is what you actually you do that in d20 anyway it's not like they had like an elaborate that's they didn't have an elaborate devil fruit system it was just sort of a just yeah. make it yourself for whatever you want to do. Yeah. And even um, even if you weren't a Devil Fruit user, I could still see you homebrewing some feats. Like, if you're like Nami, I could see you getting some spells in a feat for an upgraded yeah. climb attack. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, I picture, you know, a Nami might take Magic Initiate at level one yeah, for, and, their first, for their first feat. And, and then, then... You'd, you'd get like a... I don't know, You the next level would be a couple spells of higher level that you custom handpick, you know? Um, yeah, I, I would let people do that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's going to be stuff in one piece. I mean, there's also, like, what about observation hockey? What about these things? Um, most campaigns take a while to get there. So that seems to me like I worry about it once you start to get closer thing, but I don't know. You can probably do observation hockey. Like, I don't know. The like... foresight spell. Ninth level spell is basically what observation hockey is. Maybe, yeah, maybe so. It's also kind of like true sight to me. Yeah, true sight's um, sort of like it. Maybe that's kind of like oh uh, well, I almost again spoils. <laughs> you haven't seen you haven't seen new hockey stuff. No, there's also some. I know observation hockey can do some stuff with emotions. I've so not. I don't know if I know that one. Um, like emotion detection in. In uh, Marine Ford, when Kobe was awakening his hockey, um, he started like f- really feeling the v- emotions of everyone around him. Oh, um, this is this is familiar to me now. Yeah. Uh, you know, so maybe something like that. There's little things you can you can do and, and touches and yeah. hockey would be at some point right up. What happens when you get hockey and how you get it? And yeah, I feel like you'd get perception proficiency for sure. Um, yeah, I feel like if you have obs- is... <laughs> if you have observation hockey, you're gonna be per- perceptive. I feel you should probably have perception proficiency as a prerequisite for observation hockey. Um, That's I don't know. I don't know. We. Five E doesn't have as much freedom to pick skills, though. Even though perception is the best skill, arguably. But uh, perception is a uh, a dope skill. It is. Trigecko says, "Yeah, worry about it when you get to the point when f- the fire giant fire Logia user starts boiling the sea." Yikes. Uh... Yeah, I mean, pretty much. <laughs> that actually sounds about correct. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I'll worry about it then. But, um, actually, there's one more thing I want to do with you, Pete. Let's zoom okay. back over to roll 20. I'm ready. What we're going to do is we're going to make Gene Paul's grave. Oh, as, shit. As the level one character. Oh, hells yeah. Um... All right, well, Jean is a... How do I want to build Jean? All right, uh, I'm going to go to the character mancer, I think, because it's easy. Um, so Jean started with a devil fruit, um, and his thing is, honestly, Jean is... I, I am sort of playing him like an unarmed barbarian. <laughs> um <clears throat> Is, is the vibe that I was going for him mm-hmm. uh, but let's 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 start off with uh, human mm-hmm. um, you know what I think I think I know exactly 
I think I know exactly how we're gonna build Gene. All right, go uh, let, me for roll, it. let me roll. Some, let me roll some stats. <laughs> okay. Roll up those uh, stats, boy. Um, language proficiencies. You're only gonna get. Whoa! What? <laughs> What did you these do? Are the most ridiculous stats I've ever seen. Where where are these? Oh wait, did I roll them? Oh no, I rolled them in the wrong lobby. Oh my god, Fox, listen to these numbers. I won't use them because it does, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't matter. But, uh, I'm 13, 17, 18, 10, 4, 3. What? I got a, I got a 3. That's four ones. I have never seen anyone get a three before. You also got an 18 in the well, same... I also got a, and I also got a four. That's like the most improbable... I got a 17 as well. I got the two lowest and the two highest. Um, but I'm just going to roll again. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to roll. I'm all done rolling forever. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do standard array. <laughs> all right, cool. Um... Uh, so... So let me just start writing stuff in. Uh, 16 in strength, a 14 in constitution, a... Oh. I am in the character mancer, by the way, on stream, so I'm building it for you, more or less. Oh, uh, 14 in... Uh, what am I... Hold on. Am I on Gene? Uh, so 14 in charisma, a 12 in... Int and eight in Dex and the ten in Wisdom uh, is, I think, the closest to his stats as we have it. Um, uh, he's a human, so speed is thirty. Um, whoa, 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 slow down. Where, what'd you put in strength and con? Uh, I put a sixteen in strength. Uh, I'm going variant human. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I'm taking my extra one point into strength and uh, charisma. All bumping right. my 13 in charisma up to a 14 and then I'm just taking my regular 14 from the standard array in con um, it might be easier if you just I can probably yeah, just like bang worry. this out it might be easier if you just look at it uh, I'm looking I'm, at uh, it Okay. Uh, health is going to be 14 because I'm going to build them as a barb gotcha um, and then we'll need to make a devil fruit I don't know if you want to do that now as well um, oh gosh let's save that for next time it's a little late Um. big axe <laughs> Okay. Uh, he doesn't use an axe, but that would be a thing that I would write down in case I'm going to use an axe at some point. Because okay. that's the standard weapon for a barbarian. Uh, and then my other main attack would be my unarmed strike. So which... do barbarians get good unarmed strength? I'm going to use my variant feet to grab Tavern Brawler to buff oh. up my unarmed strikes. Uh, and to make me better at grappling, which is what Gene's all about. Very um, nice. So that's my plan there. So instead of the normal damage, I'll at least do strength damage. Uh, and I think at some point, Gene would probably, like in this system, I'd probably just get a weapon on Gene um, if I want to do this more strength-based monk because strength monk doesn't work super great. Um, that's that's true. Hmm. I'd I almost like want to homebrew a strength-based monk. I've always wanted to do this as well. Uh, that's actually, <laughs> if, uh, if I have plans for that on Fantasy Labs, as it were. I have one that my I've been my. working on. My my. Well, we might be able to adapt it if you release it at some point to this game. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use the unarmored defense because that's what I would want to do. Uh, and we're going to toss it onto... Uh, actually, let me throw this at you. This is... Oh, great. I'm glad we're building... A, this is a really good idea, Fox, to build a character because now we're hitting the first wall, uh, which is that 5e is heavily built around armor. No one in One Piece wears armor. Um, um, right. And the way I would like to rule that is as such. Um, you just have it. It just counts, but it, you don't see it. I, I agree. That's the Great. easiest way. <laughs> uh, problem cited and averted. Yep. Um, and I got rage. I to got be a couple of those. To be fair, I don't think Nami's much of an armor wear. And it, even if she is... Yeah, she would go down like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. But yeah. Luffy don't wear no armor, and he don't, so... Yeah, but he has unarmored defense. Well, he also is, he also is dodgy. Well, that's what I have here, too. Yeah, so um, I would... But I was thinking, like, Zoro, Zoro... should get the should have AC, even though he's not going to be wearing armor, technically. Yeah, I think his AC is that he deflects things with his blades. 
AC to me does not always translate to armor. It sometimes translates to, oh, you, you block the thing or you dodge the thing. I've plus one AC, fighter sty fighting style mariner, plus one AC, no heavy armor. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. That, that being said, I am not opposed to armor in One Piece. If you want to wear armor, go right ahead. Um, uh, oh, wait, I gotta do a background. Uh, so, skills, athletics, and... Um, athletics, and... What do I want? Survival from my uh, regular one, and then... For my skills, my background, uh, I'm going to get Persuasion and Insight uh, from my Guild Artisan background that I would take. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I would ask you if I could have Water Vehicle Proficiency for free instead of a language. Yep. Great. That's what I would do. Uh, and he's done. It's actually really quick. Um, <laughs> that's level one. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, um, he's got uh, Rage, got Unarmored Defense. And what level do monks get their magic strikes? Uh, level six, I want to say. Level six? Yeah. So you think awakening hockey happens at level six? That seems early to me. Um, it's about level eight for D20, isn't it? Uh, awakening hockey? Uh, yeah, it's about level eight. Yeah, I don't know. It may be a little bit, but I think it's fine. I mean, we could always move that feature out. Feature up. Yeah. yeah, you could just move the feature up if you were worried about that progression, but I don't know. I think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I guess some of the enemies that you're fighting, yeah, you could absolutely move it up because that's baked into that, That's baked into the system because of the way a lot of the monsters in the monster manual are designed. Um, right. And it necessitates it. For example, you're not going to fight a ton of ghosts no. in one piece. And the reason ghosts are so strong is because they avoid that. So, hells yeah, toss her up to... Something. Um, yeah, eight. 10? Eight, eight, ten, something, S yeah. so, something up there, and you could like swap one of the later features down. Like I know monks get like uh, understand all languages. Uh, I've hashtag Don Krieg. Uh, all the, for all the good that it did him. Uh, that yeah. twenty AC. Yeah, he did have a lot of AC. Let's be real, and he actually did uh. wear armor. That's funny, though. Uh, I don't know. As a quick... I, I mean, like, it doesn't look like a very finished character sheet, I guess, but uh, that is pretty much all Gene More or less. would be. And then, obviously, a Devil Fruit. Uh, and his Devil Fruit power would be um, his uh, his unarmed strikes deal necrotic damage. And... Um, uh, or, like, maybe his unarmed strikes deal, like, bon Actually, oh, yeah, of course. That's what touch? his ability is, is his unarmed strikes deal bonus necrotic damage to justify the fact that I'm not doing any damage with my unarmed strikes as much as I would be doing if I was just playing my class like normal. And that's why you bring the Devil Fruit to you! Yay! Uh, and I would put in all the complicated stuff about my strength going up and down and zipping around, but... Yeah, I feel like we would max it out at 20 for sure. But I, th I feel uh, yeah. like it's still doable. In 20, it's different. But in this... Um... Well, in this, there would have to be some overhealing just to justify, like... Because you get to 20 pretty quick, actually. And so having, like, a, a bump on strike... Well, it'd be maxed out at 16 to begin. Yeah, I feel like that, to begin, you would... You're just topping up. You can't go over. Yeah. Um, and then Gene has a feature later. that I haven't taken with him, which would be him going over, which would be cool eventually. Yeah, yeah. I, th I feel like yeah. that would be one of your later feats, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're already we're already using the system well. I think it works. I agree. That was I, really obviously quick. Obviously, I agree. Yeah. That was really quick, really easy for anyone who knows 5e. And for people who don't. Like, spinning up a new player on 5e is a lot easier than spinning up a new player on d20. That's also true. Hell. Lord, Lord, Lord <laughs> knows that's true. God. d20 is not the first system I would like to be introduced to as a new player. Yeah. Um, my first system was actually, like, a homebrew no-rules system. So I came in from a very, like... 
I can do whatever I want space. But if I came in and D20, I'd be like, oh my god, this is overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all these feats. I get five. I don't even know to pick one. Oh. Uh, yeah, this this is... I like this. The The... I, uh, I, yeah, I'm excited about it. I don't know. I think it would be really easy to do, and you could run it like this. Like, you could run this as is, I think. Yeah, for sure. I, and that's the that's the thing. that There was, like, two problems that we ran into there that I'm really glad that we built that character really quick and thought about it in a more practical sense. Um, so, again, good idea. But, like, that's... The Devil Fruit system is going to be the thing that lets you go back and make some of these wackier characters right. like one piece because i was thinking like oh well i was starting to think oh well an armed barbarian is kind of a jank build and it's like oh my devil fruit's just gonna undo that jank yeah so i can make the thing that was really wacky in this that worked in this other system but would be wacky in this one by just putting the other thing on so yeah i, I don't know it's 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 cool you're about it <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in I'm in that life, and I also I'm so glad you agreed with me too. Just yeah, AC just is you just aren't wearing armor, but you have it, but it doesn't look like it, but you yeah. are. I, I would also say that even if you do have armor, it doesn't inflict the penalties that armor inflicts. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really care about those honestly. Like yeah, like disadvantage on stealth. I don't care. You could argue that that's in the. Um, and that there should be a penalty, and you're probably right if you make that argument, but, eh, who cares? Like, yeah, it's like, uh, D DM doesn't care. DM. I ain't trying to, uh, I ain't trying to change the world. I'm trying to play some One Piece, so. Yeah. So, I mean, Rule of Cool wins out, and DM rules went out. What, what, what's the other thing Heavy Armor does? Like, makes it hard to swim or something? Um, it should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it do, but it should. Uh, it has a strength requirement for you to wield it. Oh well, that that makes sense. So, I mean, so you'd use that. Yeah, you can like, definitely you use that. that. Big, you won't get that big armor class unless you have the requisite strength that you could have worn that armor. Yeah, I mean, if the player wants this, muscle. wants the stealth disadvantage, I would give it to them, especially if they wanted their character like think they're sneaky, and then be terrible and get caught every time. That's a very one piece thing. Um agreed. Agreed. Also, um, Alex is saying those who do wear armor don't seem hindered by it. That's true as well. Yeah. I would say that Don Krieg wore armor and he wasn't hindered by it. That Pearl guy wore wore armor and I guess he wasn't hindered by it, but he did turtle up. <laughs> um and then the other thing that D20 was like pretty rigorous about where things like the flaws and like things to like actually build your character but my perspective on all that is character's character and yep. build, build a cool character yep pretty much uh, I, I could see like I mean this is great <laughs> I, I I think if I built Wolfric my my D&D &D character she'd probably be either a barbarian or a paladin Depending on how paladins worked in the system, uh, probably well, a barbarian. Then, to be yeah, real, yeah, barb. Yeah, barb. Uh, it seems fun to me to be a punch barian. A, pu a punch barian that is cute. Uh oh, well, um, we did it. We did we it. Won. We, we what won. We won all of One Piece and Five Piece. We did. What do, What do you guys think? Would you like to see it in practice eventually? Or I, I know I do. So. Um, I think so. It sounds like your statement is you'll see it in practice eventually. You will. I'm, I'm definitely gonna run a one shot of this at some point. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I've says I have nitpicks, but I want to be part of the practice anyway. And that's fine. Uh, pick, pick your nits. Yeah, pick uh, your nits. I'm curious, actually. Yeah, pick pick them right at me. Cause I wanna, I wanna hear, I wanna hear them nits. That those nitpicks. Yeah. The real the one real piece one. <laughs> was the tweaks we made along the way. You got me. You got me. Try. Um, 
yeah, it's not perfect. That's certainly true too. Like everything's gonna have to get everything will get ironed out a little bit in the in play in yeah. the execution. Yeah, I feel like this is a lot less jank than the default system, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's because five E is better than. <laughs> That's because five E is a better system. So even though it's like not as good of a system, it's still a. Uh, oh, mm. interesting. I was saying in the DMG they have a variant for variant for armor not as AC but as damage reduction, which I think works better. Hmm. Um, that might be an interesting thing to look at. Um, yeah, that... I've never considered using that before, but I could see it here though. Um, that seems like something that's like I don't know how play tested that actually is, but we could give it I... a play test if you want. Um. I'd be interested in that. I almost want to like not do that first and just try it as it stands. Right, right, as it stands. Um, but then we'd try it with with that. But maybe it even is okay to just toss it in because I guess I know how it works without it. That's the thing is like it almost doesn't even need a play test because I know that this works because I've played Five E. Mm -hmm. You know, like and this is just at the end of the day, it's just Five E <laughs> um, with extra boons. Hmm. Um, the armor bonus is the damage reduction. Uh, I assume that that's like over a certain threshold, like like everything above ten is damage reduction, maybe. Um, yeah, I think it like what what it adds on to your oh. base. Oh, wait, what is this? Why is my alarm going off on my phone? Is yeah. it plus dex too? I've for like the dex based armors. I would have to think it would be yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have to go? Um, do you have to go, Petey boy? I'm not like I have to go soonish, but I'm not, you know, in too much of a rush. Oh, uh, it's fine. I, I think we're we're about to wind up the stream anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm I think I'm gonna put this on YouTube because this has been really cool. Uh, I had a lot of fun building it out with you. It's good to uh, mm -hmm. it's good to hash this out. Um, because I put this together a while ago, but I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we got a chance to like go over and really think about it a bit more. Me too, me too. I, I really liked it. Oh, I'm glad! I know! Glad. Oh, it's so good! I, I can see it! I, I see the pat. I see the way. I know uh, the way. You've, uh, you've cast uh, Find the Path. Yeah, this is the way. Um, on, this, uh, on this One Piece rule set. Yep. Um, For sure. I, I think it works. It's. I feel a lot more comfortable with this than I do the current system, but I'm not going to stop running the current system. Well, the current system also... I'll, I don't want to dunk on the current system, because you know what the current system has that I love? What is that? So much heart and passion it, is in the system that we play in. It, the people who made so that true. One Piece mod just adore the show, and they love role-playing games, and I feel it when I look at everything on it. I, I The same, really. I'd like to petition that we too are One Piece fans, <laughs> but I don't don't get me wrong. Um, I mean, I like this too, but it's just I don't know. There's just so much heart in the old system. I agree. They put a lot of work into it, and like some of my some of my instinct is like I want to play One Piece D twenty because they put so much work into it, and I want that to have value, which is a pointless thought, I guess, because it's not like they know. <laughs> But in my heart, I do feel that way a little bit. Oh, that's that's so sweet. <laughs> but uh, no, I agree. I can feel the love that they put in. I, 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 I. Every time I look at the books and every time I look at the feats, I'm like, "Yep, this was put in with all the passion in the world." You don't get as much of that feeling from a reskinned Five E. <laughs> Yeah, that's certainly true. Even though I guess that is a reskin 3.5, but like, there's so much work put into it and so much added. Was it like 300 pages of One Piece D20? Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're just at like, yeah, this, these, this is the one page of variant rules. <laughs> one to two pages of variant rules. Okay, who must play some tabletop? I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discount the, um, the work we put in either. I think we've had a lot of fun, like, adapting it. 
well, this is the joy. This is the part of making something that's like the true just fun and creative energy and finding what it is. And then putting in the man hours to actually like really write everything out right. right. That's what they did. And that impresses me. Um, but we could do, we, I mean, that's something that you could do with this too, is like truly write it out and like things like that armor issue actually yep. coming to like an amenable solution to it and writing it correct for one piece and like so that there's a codified way of doing it rather than just like this is what i think will work well at the table so i'm just gonna do it you know yeah like having actual rules and laying that all out i agree i think i think it might be a worthy project to do if you're up for it sometime pete uh, perhaps. I mean, I have so many things to brew as it stands. I don't know if I have mm-hmm. time to go through the whole thing. But I could probably uh, do it if I'm I'm running it. I just don't want to steal if, your thunder. Uh, well, I mean, this, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Fox, this thing is open source. So okay, by by all means, take my thunder and do whatever you will with it. But uh, I would I would love to work on it with you if you're gonna put more work into it too. I think um, I might. Yeah. I really, I love One Piece, Pete. I, I, you know, I do too. <laughs> it's a good show, and a lot of friendship is in it. Um, the true friends were the One Pieces we made along the way. Yeah. Um, you're, you're... Trigeka, you got me good with that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Ivalon can't find the variant rule anymore, apparently. But anyway, um. I wanted to thank you guys so much for coming out and just hanging out with us and enjoying the stream and it's it's been real good having you and thank you Pete for joining me. Oh my God, Fox! Thank you so much for having me. It was it was lovely. It was a complete delight. I I know it was so fun. All right. Well, um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the little dingling bell if you. You want to keep notifications up to date? Um, Smash that like button. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, do, I was joking about that, but do do <laughs> smash that like button. That wasn't a joke. The content. <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, it's, it's fine. Anyway, um, we'll see you all later. Uh, next week, probably going to have some more prep, which you, the players not going to be invited to sorry pete um yeah i didn't know what this stream was going to be like because i've never been allowed to watch one of these ones <laughs> i guess this is a little different than your usual prep but yeah this isn't this isn't a prep stream this is just a fun 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 time stream yeah just goofing goofing them ups yep um also in the future i was considering if the one thing if the one shot thing works out, doing something akin to D and D time. Oh, spicy in one piece. Yeah, in one piece, that might be a bigger project than I'm thinking about. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. Um, that's that's something I just thought up during this stream. So I'm gonna iron that out a little bit more and get back <laughs> so to you. So we'll sounds like we'll let you know on that one. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh also also um one more thing next week's schedule, right? Uh next week's schedule we're gonna have prep on Tuesday and the game. Uh the one piece D twenty game with Gene and Sonny and everyone else. It's gonna continue on Thursday. So I hope to see you all there. I, you'll see me. <laughs> For sure. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>